Let's praise the Lord, church. Welcome to another beautiful Wednesday evening Bible study. As you know, we are studying who is to blame. The first week, the topic was who is to blame, the family. The second week was who is to blame, the church. And today, lessons number three is who is to blame, your enemy. Amen. It's, it's a very powerful Bible study. But first, before we start, let's pray. Let's pray for all those that are sick. Amen. Those in the church, our family members, our friends, our neighbors, we believe in the power of healing in the name of Jesus Christ. We also want to announce July 30th, Friday night, July 30th is going to be a powerful all-night prayer meeting here at the church. Uh, invite your neighbors, invite your, your friends, amen. We're going to have coffee, uh, sweet bread, we're going to have tea, we're going to have uh, uh, chocolate, champurrado, um, we're going to have Bible studies, we're going to have preaching, petitions, testimonies, we're going to have uh, music, amen, we're going to praise the Lord, and um, call it whatever you want to call it, lock in, all night prayer, vigil, it's time, it's time that we come together, amen, on this Friday night, July 30th, Friday, here at the church, at 9 o'clock, and we pray and we seek the Lord, so if you're sick, come, if you need the Holy Ghost, if you have a need, if you need to be healed, come on July 30th, amen, at 9 p.m., all night prayer. So who is to blame? Who is to blame? Today's topic is blaming the family. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we come before you, holy presence, God, to thank you for this beautiful Wednesday evening, Lord, that you have given us to come before your presence, whether it be through uh, Facebook or YouTube, God. We pray, Lord, for those that are sick, those who have needs, Lord Jesus. You know who they are. Those that need salvation, healing, God, in their minds, in their heart, in their spirit, in their soul, God. We pray for a special touch, oh God. Merciful, Lord. Have mercy, have compassion upon us, Lord. And move in a mighty way. Use me as a vessel of honor, God. And help me, Lord, to teach this beautiful Bible study, Lord. Blaming the enemy. Why do we... Why is so easy to blame the enemy? Praise the Lord, church. Let us start. Amen. Those that are watching on YouTube or Facebook, welcome. Welcome. Amen. The big idea. Amen. This is the idea for the whole month. Because Jesus Christ took our blame through his death on the cross, we must assume responsibility for our own decisions, choices, and trust in his grace and mercy. The idea for today's lesson is because Jesus Christ took our blame, we must assume responsibility for our own choices and refuse, amen, refuse to blame the enemy for our rebellion, refuse to blame our enemy for our disobedience, refuse to blame our enemy because we have disobeyed God and not gone according to his will we decided to do our own will as we're going to read the story of king saul he decided to go against his own against his own will amen and disobey god so refuse to blame the enemy for our rebellion and our disobedience and i know that each one of us at some point in our lives we have blamed somebody else. Let us read 1 Samuel chapter 13, 11 through 14. And Samuel speaking to the king Saul said this. And Samuel said, what have you done? Saul responded, when I saw the, the people were scattered from me and that you did not come with within the, the days appointed and that the Philistines gathered together at Michmash, then I said, the Philistines will now come down on me at Gilgal, and I have not made supplication to the Lord. Therefore, I felt compelled and offered a burnt offering 
And as you notice, he's blaming everybody except taking, taking responsibility for his disobedience. And Samuel said to Saul, you have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandments of the Lord your God, which he commanded you. For now the Lord will have established your kingdom over Israel forever. But now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart. And the Lord has commanded him to be commander over his people. Because you have not kept what the Lord commanded. Amen. And here Paul, I mean, excuse me, Saul made all kinds of excuses. Blaming his army, then blaming the Philistines, and blaming even the men of God. Let me read this story. Amen. It's always good to read a, a story. This happened way back in the 1940s, amen, in Europe. And the story goes like this. Antonina adored the wild outdoors. Mostly she loved to cut her offsprings of wild animals. She was very graceful. She was very grateful that her husband, Jan, was the keeper of the zoo. Every morning, Antonina awake to the sounds of the largest exotic animals in Europe. She turned the grounds of the villa into a garden of Eden, where she and her young son fed all kinds of orphans animal that were born there. On any given day, visitors would see wild antelopes, zebras grazing the Savinsky property. If asked to ex explain her love affair with a wild animal, she would quickly say that as a Christian, she was responsible to care for God's creation. But the serpent, just like when Adam and Eve, amen, the serpent is always there watching, attacking, amen. But the serpent stole her eating when the German roll across Poland and they bombed that beautiful city and man it was and it was nothing left but rubbles the zoo was destroyed along with many of the world's most excited exotic animals Antonina was devastated when the Nazi arrived to uh, run up what was left most of the surviving animals were shipped to Germany then, then the, uh, uh, the soldiers turned the ruined grounds into the private game preserve, hunting down the few creatures that were left behind. After the, their killing spree ended, the renowned zoo was empty. Now you imagine it was empty. When the Nazi made Jan the superintendent of the parks, got open doors that will return a massacre into a miracle. Not far from the um, zoo, one of the monstrous evil of the 20th century was taking place in the Jewish ghetto. No lions or tigers could be more beastly than the soldiers of German. Predators who were systematically, listen, they were starving thousands there were starving thousands of Jews, amen? There were starving thousands of Jews. Even as trains were arriving to transport the rest to death camps. So the Savinsky, they hatched a plan to turn the rubble of dashed streams into building blocks of something far better. Antonina and her husband did not give up. They replace exotic animals with pigs. Amen. If you will know and understand that Jews do not eat pigs, Jews do not care for pigs because of the law. Jews live by the law. So to them, pigs are a dirty animal. But this was the only thing that was given to them. This is the only animal they could find, pigs. Amen. So this is what they did. 
the Nazi where uh, sorry, I don't pigs. They turn the zoo into a pig farm. Okay, exotic animals. Now they turn it into a pig farm. So what they did with the pigs? Listen to the the ending of the story. The Nazis were amused. They could never imagine that the zookeeper was was so clever, using his position as a director of the zoo to smuggle pork into a starving ghetto. Hallelujah, Jesus. Even though they, they didn't mix with pigs, but that was the only meat that was keeping them alive. Hallelujah, Jesus. Isn't that sad? Amen. And, and, and this takes me back. Amen. When the prodigal son, and I know, I think every church member, every person that has gone through a church, a Christian church, knows about the prodigal son. Amen. How he asked his dad, give me my inheritance now, even though he was the younger, the younger son, the younger brother. Amen. He asked his father, give me what belongs to me, and I'm going to go to the world. And you know what, what happened? Amen. He lost everything in pleasures. He lost everything. Amen. And, 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 and when he lost everything, everybody else left him. And that's how the world is, church. Amen. doesn't matter what you go through. Amen. It doesn't matter what you're going through right now, what pain, what, what, what trials, what tribulation, what issues, what problems. Amen. What sickness. Stay. Learn the lesson from the prodigal son. Amen. Stay in the church. Amen. Somehow, some way, the Lord is going to make a way for you. Amen. Trust in God. The Lord is still in his throne. The Lord is still in control. We may not see it. We, we, might, we, we might waver, but the Lord is still king. He is the king of kings and the Lord of oh Lord. He is our master. He is our creator. Stay. Amen. I don't know who I'm speaking to. Amen. And if you're listening to me and if you're watching this video and you out there lost and one day you were in, in church, the Lord is telling you today, this beautiful evening, come back, my son. Come back, my daughter. Amen. Um, he is waiting for you with open arms. He will not judge you. He will not point fingers. Amen. He will not accuse you. He will take you back. He will forgive you. And he will clean you from head to toe. He will clean your mind, your soul, your, and your spirit. Amen. So here, this beautiful story, how he ends. So they grab pigs. Amen. So they smuggle pork into a starving ghetto to feed the Jews. Nor did they uh, um, know that the empty cages in the zoo have been turned into a, 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 a hiding place for more than 300 Jews smuggled out of the ghetto. Amen? So, so, the, so this is the story. If you have lemons, amen? If you have issue, amen? Make it your business. Let us make it our business to turn those lemons into lemonade. Yeah, and I know it's not easy. Amen? When life gives you lemon, make lemonade. And I know it's not easy. Amen? But the Lord is with us. The Lord promised to always be with us. Do you remember that, that, that old saying, footprints? Amen? It just came to my mind. Footprints. Amen. It's a beautiful poem. I mean, it has so millions of, of copies. Amen. That is, you know the story. At the very end, it's only one footprint, and, 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 and the person saying, Lord, why you left me? He's saying, I didn't leave you. The only reason you see one footprint is because when you were going through all those trials and, and tribulation, I was carrying you. And the Lord cares for you, and the Lord cares for us, and he's with us, and he's going to help us to make it. So, I don't know who, I'm, who am I speaking to, but stay in there. Stay in the Lord. Stay in the church. If you're going to suffer, suffer in the church. The world has nothing for us. Amen? 
All he has is pain, suffering, death, sickness. Amen. Stay in the Lord. He loves you. He cares for you. And there is no one like the Lord. It's easier said than done. Sometimes the difficulties, the problems, the, the, the issue we encounter in life are enormous and seem outside of control. Have you lost control? Of course, we all have. But not my Lord, not your Lord, Jesus Christ. The Lord is always in control. Amen. Given, given so many issues, amen, similar, similar to Antonina who struggled in identifying an opportunity to change a negative into a positive. Amen. To change a negative into a positive. Most will be more inclined to blame the enemy for destroying a good thing. Why is it so easy to blame the enemy? Just like King Saul did. Hmm? He blamed the people. He blamed the prophet. He blamed the enemy when it was his issue. He didn't wait. Amen. He did not wait upon the men of God. In church, we must wait. Amen. We must wait upon God. He will see you through. Don't get desperate. Don't go ahead of God's will. Stand still, the Bible says, and wait. The deliverance of the Lord is coming. And he will see you through your issues. He will see you through your problems. Wait upon the Lord. And again, I say, wait. We can blame the enemy for causing our trouble. And we can wallow in our misery. Or we can turn our problem into a blessing. Saul is a biblical example of someone, a man, who blamed the enemy. Scripture tells us that he was anointed to be king of God's people. But that's not all. Along with his anointing came an assignment. God said, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel. Go and read the story there on 1 first, first Samuel chapter 15. And, 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 and God told King Saul, go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy that they have, that they have, all that they have, and spare them not. First Samuel 15, 2 and 3. So King Saul was given an order, was given a commandment, go and battle the Malachites and destroy them all, from the king to the babies to the women to the soldiers to the animals to the homes, destroy them all. Amen. So, so, so the order was clear: order destruction. But that is not what Saul did. First Samuel fifteen nine says this: Re reveal Saul and the people, spare Agag and the best of sheep, and the oxen and the fatling and the lambs, and all that was good, and will not utterly destroy them all. Saul had been given an assignment, but instead of doing as he was instructed, Saul did his own thing. Amen? And, and that is us sometimes. We want to do our own thing. And God is telling you, this is what you must do. Amen? So now we're going to see what happened. What happened when we did disobey God? Why is blaming the enemy so easy to do? Amen? Why is blaming the enemy so easy to do when in reality it is our fault? Saul's response to the prophet Sam is quite interesting. Having been forewarned by God of Saul's disobedience, Samuel went to confront the man he had anointed king. When he confronted by the prophet Samuel, Saul spoke first and said, I have carried out the Lord's instruction. Samuel, however, responded, What then is this sheep in my ears? 
why, why do I hear cattle that, that I hear? First Samuel 15, 13 and 14. Then Saul changed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then Saul changed his tune. At first he said, I have carried out the Lord's instruction. But having been confronted with the noise of sheep and oxen, Saul said, they have brought they. Amen. The second that they have brought anything to him, he should have given the order. Kill, kill them all. Destroy them all because that was the commandment of the Lord. But look what he said. They have brought them from the uh, Amalekites. For the, for the people spared the, the best of the sheep and oxen to sacrifice. Listen to the excuse. To sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. Amen. We always, we always have an excuse. And I'm telling you today, we need to stop with the excuses. Amen? Let me say one more time. We need to stop with the excuses. Excuses are not going to help us. Amen? Just like in this story, in this beautiful story that, that, we need, that we need to learn from, it did not help King Saul making excuses for, for himself. And the rest we have destroyed. First Samuel 15, 15. Notice first he said he had done whatever the Lord said. Then it was the people for. Then there were the ones who spared the sheep and the oxen. Amen. And then it was for a, a supposed divine purpose to worship God. The Lord was not asking for sacrifices. Amen. The Lord was asking for obedience. Go and do as I said. Period. Saul passed the blame to the people. I had nothing to do with it. I know I did not do what God said, but it was out of my hands anyway. No, it was not. He is the king. Amen. He gave the order. The people were supposed to obey. Hallelujah, Jesus. The Lord gives the order. We obey. Saul attempted to minimize, and then he attempted to, to put a spiritual spin on his disobedience. We kept the best to use as, as a sacrifice unto the Lord. Samuel, however, was not impressed with Saul's disobedience. Amen. Samuel saw as he was. King Saul had chosen to do his own thing. Amen. Just like us sometimes. We choose to do our own thing. And the Lord is watching. And the Lord sent his messenger saying, we must change. My brother, my sister, you need to change. Before it's too late, you need to change. And, and we don't like changes. Any, any, whether it be, listen, whether it, be, it be for the good or the bad, we don't like changes. Amen? But the Lord help us. We must change. Saul had chosen to do his own thing rather than fulfill God's command. Amen? Saul tried to do everything he could to deflect any responsibility. Amen? We must take responsibility for our actions, for our decisions. Anytime we do our own will, we need to stop blaming, like the Bible study number one, blaming the family. We need to stop blaming the church, and we need to stop blaming our enemy. Amen? It's not their fault. It is our fault. It is our responsibility to take charge, amen, of what is told to us. Do as the Lord com commanded. And Samuel, amen, said, what have you done? Amen? King Saul tried to justify it. Amen? And the men of God said, nope, you're wrong. And because of what you have done, just like we finished reading, the kingdom, listen, the kingdom will be taken away from you. Now, do you imagine, amen, how, how serious the Lord took it, amen, that because of King Saul's disobedience, he sent the prophet and said, hey, tell the king, he is going to be king no more. 
I have chosen somebody else. So it's, church is real serious. Amen. Obeying God is, is real serious. It's, it's no game. Bible says there is a time for everything. And when the Lord call, when the Lord calls you to do something, we must do it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. With all these excuses that, that, that King Saul gave, Samuel was not impressed. Amen. Samuel was not in, impressed with, with his actions or his reasoning. Samuel told Saul that what he has done was foolish. Samuel said, you have not kept that commandment. You have not kept the order of the Lord. Amen. He refused, King Saul refused, amen, to take ownership of his mistakes. That is also me and you. Sometimes we know that we are wrong and we are prideful, amen, and we don't take ownership of our mistakes. Saul's problem was self. Amen. He was full of himself. He was a very prideful king. Amen. And, and he thought he was going to get away with it. And because he did not humble himself, he justified himself, he lost his kingdom. Amen. And this is the message. Lose yourself, amen, and lead and live your life according to the scriptures. Live your life according to the will of God. Amen. Paul said, it is not I that live, but it's Christ that live in me. Amen. So was the one who disobeyed God. So was a fault. So was to blame, not the Philistines. Amen. The Philistines were a vessel, amen, that, that if King Saul would have waited, the Lord would have given him the victory, the Bible says, over the Philistines and established his kingdom forever. So it is a big deal to obey or disobey, amen. Lives are lost when we disobey. Our souls are lost when we disobey. But when we obey God, amen, life, we get life and life in abundance. We get peace. We get joy. Amen. And not only that, but the Lord is pleased with us. Is the Lord pleased with you? How are you living your life for the Lord today? Amen. When the Lord speaks to your heart, when the Lord speaks to your mind, do you obey God's word? When the preacher, when the teacher gives a message amen do you submit do you obey or you think oh that, that's for the old days no the law is the same yesterday today and forevermore it is time to submit it is time to obey amen and it is time to do god's will look the example of king saul he lost his kingdom because of his disobedience. And he, if he would obey, the Lord will have established his kingdom forever. Much of the problem is that we lack a proper understanding of trouble. Trouble comes to all of us. Little, young, old, uh, 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 poor, rich, it doesn't matter. Amen? Trouble comes to all of us. Amen? Amen? But the Bible says that, that the weeping lasts for a moment, but the sun comes in the morning. Amen? So church, and I'm going to close with this, trust in the Lord. Amen? Trouble is going to come, but trust in the Lord. He has us in his hands. Amen? Much of the problem is that we lack a proper understanding. Ask the Lord to give you understanding. Lord, what is happening to me? Amen. What is happening? Help me understand why am I going through what I'm going through. 
Is it, is it my fault? Is it you trying me? Is it the devil attacking me? Identify the problem. Identify the issue. Amen? Is the Lord proving you? Is it a temptation? Is it a, 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 a problem of self? Amen? Is it, is it that you don't want to humble yourself before the presence of the mighty God? Identify the problem. Amen? And I'm going to finish with this just to remind you. We are here every um, Wednesdays and Thursdays uh, 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 through Facebook or YouTube. Uh, Wednesdays is English. Thursday is Spanish. Don't forget July 30th, Friday night. It's going to be an explosion. People are going to be delivered. Amen? People are going to be full of the Holy Ghost. Come and fellowship with, with, with us. The doors will be open early. Amen. And we're going to have a, a great time. God bless you. My desire is we're here for you. Call us. Text, send a text um, through Facebook or um, YouTube. If you have a need, you have a, a petition, the Lord has called us to serve. Amen. We were created to serve. Serve him first. Love him first and then our neighbors. And you are our neighbor. God bless you. We love you, and we wish the very, very best for you. And we pray life and life in abundance in your life and your, and your family. God bless you.